So we start off with our first um, panelist. Um, <laughs> she is the head of um, the Journalism for Nation Building Foundation, um, one of the country's most seasoned and multi-awarded journalists. Um, she has earned the greatest honor of facing not one, but two liberal, two libel suits filed by a sitting justice. Um, and she is also the um, author of um, Shadow of Doubt, um, Probing the Supreme Court, which is a bestseller that explored the critical weaknesses of the Supreme Court. So may I present Rappler's editor-at-large, Ms. Marites Vitu. Hi, uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Actually, this is so timely because this morning I, I woke up and I scrolled my Facebook uh, news feed and the president uh, threatened to declare martial law. He was so upset by violations of the lockdown. So this is the kind of environment uh, we are in today. And I think I'll show you in the first slide um, why there is a bigger context to this public health crisis. Okay, um, the slides. Okay, I, I've just entitled my presentation Vigilance, the Call of the Times, because uh, this is really what we need nowadays. So the second slide will show you the context of where we are today. I mean, since 2016, we've been under an authoritarian rule. And I had to update my slides because, as I said last night, the president threatened to declare martial law, no, a martial law-like lockdown, which means he will ask the military to enforce the quarantine and the lockdown. As of today, we have uh, the police, uh, which enforces the lockdown. But in Cebu, quite interesting, if also this morning I woke up to this scary video of uh, army tanks rolling into a barangay in Cebu to enforce the quarantine because this barangay is uh, said to have the most number of uh, infections. So that's the context. And another, uh, the next slide will show why we need to be concerned. Of course, we are in this public health crisis, but as we know, rule of law has declined in the country. And if we look at the latest World Justice Project of 2020, they do a yearly index. We've been uh, ranking quite low, number 13, out of 15 countries. And in fact, last year we dropped, uh, we experienced a huge drop. And why that huge drop? I mean, it's because of the human rights abuses committed during the war on drugs, as well as the weaponizing of the rule of the law by the president. And the next slide will show what is the main weapon of this of Duterte against COVID-19 is to declare a state of emergency. So this is a common uh, site nowadays, as I wrote earlier in a piece for FNF, I said that every time I go to the supermarket, that's once a week, I pass through checkpoints with, you know, actually these are police men and police women wearing camouflage and they are allowed to wear camouflage uniforms during a state of emergency and they carry rifles and of course the usual pistol shaped temperature, uh, uh, temperature um, thermometer to take your temperature and you know um, the main law which provides the basis for the state of emergency is called Bayanihan Act and it really grants the president's the president three basic powers for uh, to reallocate and realign the budget, to direct operations of, of businesses, speci specifically hospitals, etc., and also take over these businesses. It also grants him the power to require businesses to prioritize contracts, as we know for PPEs. Well, the good news is this is supposed to be effective only for three months unless Congress extends it. And uh, next slide will show what are the red flags um, in this law. It's very punitive. Uh, lawyers have looked at it, said it, it, it describes additional penalties apart from those already existing in uh, laws. 
And of course, there's also this threat or this, uh, uh, yeah, a warning hanging over the heads of public officials that uh, they can be permanently or temporarily disqualified from public office if they offend, if they commit offenses during this state of emergency. And then, of course, for us in the media and for netizens, this provision is really scary because it uh, punishes those who spread false information. And, you know, the way false information is defined is quite loose. And the penalties of imprisonment for two months and a fine ranging from 10,000 to a million pesos. And the next slide, uh, uh, I was able to interview Professor uh, Dane. Dante Gatmaitan of the UP College of Law. And he was really troubled by this provision because he said, we, you know, we use social media every day. We protest, we use humor. You know, this is our platform. So if government uh, can use it and say that we're spreading false information and arrest us. And in the next slide, here in the Philippines, ideally, if there were a rule of law, it's very difficult really to um, prosecute people for uh, false news because there are only four grounds for this as the Supreme Court has decided. Pornography this one is false, advertisement, and then if you advocate imminent lawless action and if you're a danger, what you say is a danger to national security. This is a high bar. It's, a, it's difficult to prove, but you know... Uh, the next slide will show that uh, also I just wanted to uh, exp to show that the, the law can be used, you know, and for example, in this recent rally in Quezon City, 21 were arrested and sent to prison for five days, but they were bailed out by, I'm sorry, by celebrities and citizens who pitched in funds. And so uh, why is this happening in a public health crisis? Uh, well, the Philippines is not alone, but Duterte's point of view or worldview is, is, is quite narrow. He sees the pandemic from the lens of public order. So if you notice in his late night speeches, for those who stay up late to listen to him, he has ordered you know, government officials to follow lockdown rules. He has ordered the police and military to shoot and kill those who cause trouble. He was referring to the urban poor. He also lashed out at a lawyer, Chell, for causing disorder. And the latest last night was to threaten martial law. So uh, instead of public of assuring us or you know, giving us data on where we are now, uh, he threatens us with, uh, I mean, of public officials, citizens. And so here in the next slide, since, since Duterte has a narrow worldview, he has asked the military to run the anti-COVID-19 program. But actually, if you look at the program, its majority responses are on public health. But I think uh, he thinks of the military as people who just follow orders, as he said before. So if you check on Facebook, there's a National Task Force Against COVID-19 uh, General Carlitos Galvez is the chief implementer. He does daily briefings, but now there is a spokesperson, another retired general. So the generals are running the show in terms of implementation. The next slide, here in Luzon, in our island, 25,000 already have been arrested. I really don't know how long they are put to jail, put in jail behind bars, but some say it's been a, it takes anywhere from one day or till they can pay the fines. But nationwide, more than 100,000 already have been accosted and majority were warned and others were fined. So just to compare, these numbers are much larger than those tested for the coronavirus. I mean, if the efforts were placed on, on, on testing, on widespread testing, then maybe we'll have better results. So as of April 12, we've only tested a little over 33,000. So that's the, the frame uh, by which Duterte views the uh, problem. But of course, there are lawyers groups, there are advocates who are helping citizens understand their rights and even coming to their rescue. On Facebook, of course, this is all online now, alternative law groups, answer questions, 
the volunteers and lawyers organized for the rule of law, which works with the office of the vice president. They've also been doing uh, uh, good work online. And this is, I think, a good response to what's happening. And I'd like to end with this call for vigilance coming from retired Supreme Court Justice Carpio. It's really in times of grave crisis like this that our freedom of expression is in danger of being sacrificed in the altar of public order. So as I said in another webinar also hosted by the FNF in Southeast Asia, our fight is not just to protect ourselves from the dangerous virus, but to protect ourselves from uh, abuses by government in curtailing freedom of expression. Thank you and looking forward to talking to you later.